this video, I'll show you how to use MATLAB to solve the Laplace equation. We'll use the direct method. Here's the two-dimensional Laplace equation. We can discretize this equation using the central difference approximation. To write down the discrete Laplace equation in matrix form, we use natural ordering. The solution of the Laplace equation will require boundary conditions. Here I show you the problem on a square with side length 1. We take phi equal to 0 on the bottom and sides of the square and phi equal to 4x times 1 minus x on the top. With this boundary condition, phi is 0 on the two top corners and has a maximum value of 1 at x equals 1 half. Before we go to MATLAB, let me give you a brief outline of the code. First, we'll define the rectangle and grid parameters. Second, we'll construct the Laplacian matrix for both the interior and boundary points. Third, we'll construct the right-hand sign vector that specifies the boundary conditions. Fourth, we'll solve the matrix equation using the backslash operator. This is actually the simplest line in the code, but takes almost all of the computational time. That's the power of MATLAB. And finally, we'll plot the solution. Frankly, writing the code to plot your results usually takes the longest amount of time. That's unfortunate, but that's the way it's always been. OK, let's write a MATLAB code. First, we define the rectangle and the grid parameters. We're going to solve the Laplace equation on a unit square, but I want to make it general. So I define Lx equals 1 and Ly equals 1. And then later, if we want to change the aspect ratio of the rectangle, we can do that without changing the code much. I want to specify the resolution. Here I use capital NX and capital NY to represent the number of intervals in the X and the Y direction. This is going to be a 100 by 100 grid. Again, we don't want to hard code that because we want to be able to adjust the resolution to make sure that the solution is accurate. Uh, little nx and little ny are the number of grid points, which is one more than the number of intervals. So we can just assign them. dx and dy are the lengths of the sides of, the, of a grid cell. And x and y, then, are the coordinates of x and y on the grid. Next, I want to assign to a vector the index values of the boundary of the domain using natural ordering. We're going to need this when we set up the uh, matrix and take into account boundary conditions. So the boundary index, I assign the bottom left, top right. So for instance, the bottom is going to be the index of 1 through nx, 1, 2, 3 to nx. The left is going to be starting at 1, but then we need to jump nx and get to 1 plus nx, and then jump nx again until we get to the top of the domain, and so on. So you do this on a piece of paper, figure out what the correct indices are before you code this uh, in MATLAB here. Next, we set up the matrix. The matrix is a banded matrix with uh, a main diagonal, two diagonals below the main diagonal, and two diagonals above the main diagonal. The main diagonal has fours going uh, across it, while the other four diagonals have minus one across it. Because it's a banded matrix, it consists mostly of zeros. And to save memory and to speed up the code, 
we can code it as a sparse matrix. Um, it's useful to use sparse matrices in MATLAB. They're a little bit harder to understand. You have to use the help pages. But we can set up a banded sparse matrix using this spdiags function. Um, we give it the diagonal elements. The diagonal elements are all uh, vectors of size nx times ny, even though only the main diagonal is of that size. But because they're constants, it, it doesn't really um, cause us much difficulty. Uh, it says that uh, we have these five diagonals here, as defined by diagonals. The first one uh, gets in the main diagonal, 0. The second one, which is minus 1, will be minus 1 means 1 below the main diagonal. Uh, then the other one is 1 above the main diagonal. Then nx below the main diagonal, and then nx above the main diagonal. So we'll construct the banded matrix here with um, five diagonals. And you have to tell sp diags that the size of your matrix is nx times ny by nx times ny. Look at the help pages. Now we need to replace the rows of this matrix corresponding to boundary points by the rows of the um, identity matrix. So we define i equals the sparse identity matrix using the spi function in MATLAB. And then that would be an nx times ny by nx times ny identity matrix. Then we use our boundary index variable that define the rows that are um, associated with the boundary points to replace the rows of A corresponding to these boundary indexes. So the row and then all of the columns. Um, so we're replacing rows by the corresponding row of the identity matrix. So that will set up the proper boundary condition. Next, I want to set up the right-hand side of the matrix equation. I found that easier to do using a, a matrix. So I'm going to set the B equal to an NX by NY matrix. We initialize it to all zeros. Uh, then we're going to go through this uh, matrix representing our grid and assign the boundary values on that grid to their correct value. The bottom left and right are zero, so we don't actually have to do anything, but I do that here anyway, just in case you wanted to change that. Uh, so what? let me say what the bottom says, right? So it says B for all the X values, and for the first Y value, it takes the value of zero. So that corresponds to the bottom of the domain, all the X values and the first Y value, and, and so on. And then the interesting one is the top of the domain. So all X values and the top value of Y, which is NY, then gets the value of 4X times 1 minus X. So in B, in the matrix form, we put in the boundary conditions. But B is supposed to be a column vector with natural ordering. So we reshape B into a column vector of nx times ny rows and one column. And it actually follows the natural ordering because um, MATLAB then will goes down columns. So it goes down the first column, and then to it appends to that the second column, and then appends to that the third column. While going down columns here means going um, uh, through the x values, which on our grid is actually going from left to right horizontally. So there is an inherent um, uh, uh, conflict here between our physics notation where x is the first um, element and y is the second element and a matrix notation where the first element is going down a column 
right, corresponding to the row. So the first element in some sense vertical because it corresponds to the row. And the second element corresponds to the column is some sense horizontal. So the physics notation is that the first index is the horizontal index, while the matrix notation, the first index, is the vertical index. It works out here in this case because MATLAB goes down columns while the natural ordering goes horizontal. So it actually works out fine. Uh, but we'll see that in another case we need to take into account this difference. We now have the matrix A. We have the right-hand side B. We're solving the equation A phi equals B. We do that using the backslash operator, phi equals A backslash B. That's the solution step of the code. That is uh, all of the computational time, particularly when the matrix A is large. Yet it's the simplest line in the code. That's the power of MATLAB. Phi is a column vector, so I want to reshape it back into a uh, matrix. So we can use the reshape command of phi and reshape it into an NX by NY matrix. Finally, the last step is to graph our solution. We have the solution in phi as a matrix. What we want to do now is to plot contours of phi, that is plot lines of phi on our domain where phi is a constant. That will give us a good picture of our solution. Um, to do that, we need to uh, make our grid. So we use the mesh grid function to um, convert the x coordinates and the y coordinates to two nx by ny matrices, capital X and capital Y, that specify the x and y values on our grid. We're going to use the contour um, function in MATLAB. Um, the, the default call to contour is x, y, phi prime. Phi prime means the transpose of phi. Um, here we're again confronting the um, contradiction between the physics of the problem and, and matrices so that um, we need to take the transpose of our phi to match the matrix notation. So remember our x and phi, we have x and y coordinate, but x is horizontal and y is vertical, while MATLAB wants the first coordinate to be vertical and the second coordinate to be horizontal. So to fix that, we can just take the transpose of phi. Um, if you do the default contour x, y, phi prime, then, it will, then MATLAB will draw its own contour levels. Um, I don't like the levels that they choose. So instead of doing the default, then I chose which contour levels to draw. So I put that in the vector V. I also want to see the numbers on the contours. So I add the arguments show text on so we can see the numbers. Uh, axis equal, so I want to plot a square, not a rectangle, a non-square rectangle, so I, I call axis equal. And then uh, I also did not like the y tick values chosen by MATLAB, so I set the y tick values myself, and I wanted them to agree with the x tick values. So those are the values where you put the numbers on the axis. I also don't like the font of MATLAB, the default font, so I use LaTeX and set the font size. Now let's run the code. I docked the editor in the MATLAB environment. This is how you would uh, write the code and debug the code in this environment. We can hit run, and then that's our contour plot solution. Um, let's first look at the solution, make sure everything makes sense. Remember the boundary conditions is um, 0, 
zero, zero on the two sides and the bottom, and then it goes from zero to one in the middle on the top side back to zero. So we're plotting the contours of phi, where phi is equal to 0 0.8, 0 0.6, 0 0.4, etc. So when phi equals 0 0.8, we see it touches the top um, of the square at basically where the top is a 0 0.8, has a value of 0.8. Remember, 1 in the middle and zeros on the side. So it's symmetric about the midpoint. And then as you decrease the contour levels, you move down. So it's 1 here, so then it goes 0 0.8, and then 0 0.6, 0 0.4, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, and stays symmetric, as you would expect. And then the bottom, uh, the, the bottom side of the square is at 0. So as the contour level approaches 0, you get closer and closer to the bottom of the square and always comes back up because the two corners here are also zero. Okay, so the solution looks pretty good. Um, as you coded this problem, you would make use of the environment. You see we have all the variables here in the workspace. Um, as you write the code, you can uh, set breakpoints right and run to breakpoints and um, you can uh, um, check examine the different variables um, you can use all the tools of the MATLAB environment to uh, help you write the code and to debug the code in the direct method we use Gaussian elimination to solve for phi MATLAB does this for us with the backslash operator. The matrix can be very large, but our computers are very powerful and have a lot of memory to store large matrices. I'm Jeff Chasnov. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.